folks i wanted to introduce a new telescope celestron astromaster 130 i wanted to play around with this beginner telescope when i tried to look up online for videos on 130 everyone actually showed how to unbox this telescope how to put this together and not a single video that talks about how to take pictures using this telescope so i was kind of wondering you know if someone bought it and if they are trying to take pictures with it how do they do that i myself couldn't find a whole lot of tutorials or anything that helps me how do i take pictures using this one i wanted to forward the videos to friends and say you know this is something that you might you might look into but i couldn't find any decent video that actually shows how to take pictures with this one so what is this telescope even though it's a beginner telescope for you to understand that this is an equatorial mount it is a german equatorial mount if you can see it like telescope is on one side weights on the other side so you basically balance this telescope and if you balance it well uh, it is going to track the sky across the east to west so that is east and this is west so when it starts here it starts tracking the stars and it goes up all the way well the trouble for us is there is no motor to track we have to actually move the telescope in the direction that we wanted in order for you to take pictures so if you buy expensive telescopes your telescopes will do this guiding on their own for this telescope since it is manual you don't see this guiding this particular movement is called right ascension movement and this movement is not automated in this telescope wait there is something called here like a motor drive if you can see it and this motor drive will do this work for you so it is going to make this ra which is the right ascension for you so that you actually you can start tracking pictures and you still can keep you know if you are looking at a moon or a planet venus you can still keep it in the field of view right by you tracking it if you don't have the motor drive you won't be able to keep the object in your field of view when you are looking at it it will start moving away from your eyesight the eyesight is called field of view it will start moving away so if you turn this motor drive on this telescope is going to track that come closer and look at it it has a north and south button and then there is a little speed button here you know you can increase and decrease the speed and if it is going away you know maybe you can increase the speed if it is going in the wrong direction decrease the speed you can play around with the speed but you should be able to keep the telescope in the field of view well the telescope is the top portion which is what you are seeing right now and the mount is in the bottom portion i don't want to talk about unboxing and installation yet i just wanted to show you this telescope most people who buy this telescope can pretty easily open a tripod put the mount on the tripod and put the telescope on it the trouble comes in is not the basic installation i mean that you can easily do it uh, within like few minutes you will figure out what you need to do but the trouble really comes in is what i'm showing you see these slow motion controls you see the way i positioned the telescope you see the tripod legs you see the weights where they are these are all the key things for you to get the best use of this telescope i myself have to experiment quite a lot to figure out how do i use this well well there is another thing that i kind of felt very upset so i have a i have a dslr camera and i thought i can plug this dslr camera and i can take a picture and i was very wrong because if i plug in this dslr i can't get to focus it and then i started reading online material that the dslr sensor is so far away 
for this focal point and you cannot use the DSLR unless you do some whole bunch of things. I said, well, this is no good then. I don't want to do all that stuff. I wanted to keep my life simple. So this is 200 bucks. It's already expensive if you are starting it out. When I looked at the price when I started the astrophotography, this seems to be quite a lot of amount for me to actually spend just to play around with it, right? So if, I, if you don't have a DSLR camera, you can actually buy a small camera, like a ZWO camera, uh, probably cost you 120 bucks, like a color camera, and you can put it right here. And if you do that, you should be able to make the focus working for you. I think that would be the best option rather than using this with so many other adapters and then worrying about that stuff. I'll show you guys all that quickly. Okay, so before getting into the camera business, I wanted to show you guys few additional things. Well, I put a red dot finder on top. This is the Newtonian telescope. So basically the light goes in and there is a primary mirror in the back. It reflects it back to the secondary right here inside. And the secondary has a little kind of, uh, you know, light direction, which is going to direct the light into your eyepiece. That's how these Newtonians work. So you send the light inside, reflects it back, and then there is a little uh, twisting of a light curve that is going on for you to actually see the view here. So the light is traveling double the size than this telescope. So rather than having a huge telescope, you can actually have a shorter version in the Newtonian. They do have some collimation issues when you starting out, and we can talk about how do we collimate the Newtonian telescopes later. But I think uh, it's pretty easy. You can get a cheap laser and you can quickly collimate it. That should not be a problem at all. Now, the telescope is going to move in this direction, right? This is called declination. This deck ascension, the, sorry, this deck declination is going to move on the sky. And typically in an equatorial situation, this movement is for you to move from north to west, uh, north to south, right? That's what the deck is for. The deck generally moves, uh, you know, maybe from the north to south or south to north, depends on what's going on, where the object is. But you are the one who is directing it. Whereas your uh, right ascension, you know, the this direction of the of the mount is actually going from east to the west, and it is moving, right? So you need to balance this telescope in both directions. So in my case, I balanced it here. This is good. And also, you have to balance it on this side. Like meaning once you put it here, make sure that this balance is good as well, right? Make sure it is not like heavy and it is falling apart when you are trying to move. One of the things that I noticed, uh, which I feel like a little bit of annoying is this motor drive comes in the way when I try to like move this side like you know in this case I can move all the way down whereas I can't move it all the way down on this side I don't think there is a big choice that I can do I mean that's what I have to live with so I may have to move it this way and I have to look at and I have to push it up to see what I need to see right I mean you can definitely uh, change the direction of the telescope in order to see it right so I don't know if I can, I might take a picture of the floor, but you see like three holes here, like three circles here. So these circles actually point the tripod towards Polaris, okay? I looked up the Polaris there, I looked up my in my telescope, and when the telescope is like right in the middle, I can see the Polaris in my red dot finder right here, right? That's what that is. So right now when I look at it, I'm looking towards the Polaris when I'm looking through the red dot finder. So using my red dot finder, if I turn my red dot finder, I'm exactly, you know, where the Polaris should be. That's what this particular setup does. And when you do that, you are polar aligned using this telescope. Okay. You don't need to do anything else. 
that's one thing you may have you have to put your telescope north looking at the polaris as long as you are in uh, northern hemisphere point number two that you need to be careful when you are starting it out and no videos on celestron astro master 130 talks about it okay that is in the back of it here there is a knob okay i'm going to actually show you guys this telescope uh, zooming in you need to put here your latitude okay go to the cell phone app look at your latlon which is the latitude and longitude of the area the city and the location that you are living in and this one indicates the latitude of your area let's say mine is like 33 or 35 so i put it to match to that particular uh, number okay so that's very critical thing to do what will that do well for any equatorial mount in order to adjust the location of where it is in order to accurately polar align when it is looking up like this this motor when it is moving or when you are looking at the star when you are polar aligned and when your latitude is in a good um, you know accurately measured the what you are watching in the field of view is going to stay longer in the field otherwise it will try to move away pretty quickly because of the sky rotation okay so that's why you need to kind of keep track of the latitude that is very very important okay now let's talk about how to take a picture which is everyone is uh, wondering right so i got this from opt and i'll i don't like unboxing videos i didn't even do this for this one so this is uh, zwo asi 120mc it's 120 bucks it's high speed camera a much better alternative rather than buying a dslr for this kind of a telescope right so you see here this is the usb cable and you can run this cable send it to your computer and inside you know a nice um, fisheye kind of a lens is there it gives you a nice view you can actually remove this fisheye lens you get this nose piece when you buy the camera and all you have to do is uh, put the nose piece by the way there are threads inside this nose piece as well you can thread the filter like you know color filters or whatever the filters you need for the moon and for the jupiter for the planets you see that stuff start coming up uh, you can actually leave it something like this and uh, start focusing for the object that you need right now it is just showing like a tree uh, you can reduce the light a little bit so that actually you can see what is behind so i set my red dot finder to the telephone pole there so when i look at the object through my eyepiece let's say if i can see the electric pole you can lock the ra knob and the declination knob and when you are when you are looking at right in the middle of that electric pole when you are doing that set your red dot finder as well to align that so first align your telescope to the object when that's what you are looking through the eyepiece or through the through your tel, through your computer fix the red dot finder once you do that alignment like you know there are there is one knob here and one knob here make sure that it is exactly the laser is going on to that object when you do that once during the day in the night time now if you want to take this telescope to the moon or to the star all you have to do is uh, look at it 
and just move up, up and now when the red dot is looking at that object, that is exactly what the telescope is looking at. All you have to do is uh, point it to the moon and take a beautiful picture. As long as your red dot finder takes it to the moon, start the capturing the computer on the computer, a beautiful picture, you know, share it with your friends, family and all. If you are interested in these videos, uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and click on the notification button if you like it. Thank you all. You will be really excited when you do this on your own.